Each time I attend a workshop, I'm amazed at what I learn, but the drawback is committing to attend a two or three day event. Speculating that many of you may have the same time constraints, I decided to bring a workshop to you featuring serger techniques. Pam Mashey, the Baby Lock Educational Ambassador, is our master at teaching serger workshops. And Pam, I'm always impressed what I learned from you. Well, thank you, Nancy, and thank you for having me. Today, we're going to take a basic overlock stitch and show you how you can modify the stitch for binding quilts. I'll show you how fusible thread streamlines the sewing process, producing professional results. Ultimate Serger Techniques, that's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. During this two-part series, Pam and I are making small samples and we encourage you to do the same so that when it's time for you to do the technique, you remember what you, we've done and how to implement it. You're not gonna have a little binding this small and put in a frame, but at least it shows you what a beautiful binding you can create with the serger. You can use this, your favorite technique of the strips to cut, how to stop and start, but we're gonna show you how to work with the serger and the special technique of working with fusible thread in the lower looper of a four thread overlock stitch. Pam, you can tell our viewers how you've set up your machine for that special stitching. Okay, again, we're going to be using the fusible thread and the fusible thread will be placed in the lower looper so that when we're ready to turn our binding over and press, the fusible thread will hold it in place. Mm -hmm. We're going to place regular serger thread in the upper looper and both needles. And when we thread, we thread again decorative thread, the fusible in the lower looper, and we're going to set our stitch width for 5.5. That's going to be the standard quarter inch setting for any type of binding or quilt stitching. And our stitch length will be set between two and a half and three, giving ample coverage for the fusible thread. You're also going to notice on the binding strip itself, there's going to be a line that I've drawn. That line is going to be placed a quarter of an inch from the edge, the, the final edge or the horizontal edge of our fabric. When we stitch, you want to look down through the needles or down where the needles are going to be penetrating the fabric and as that stitches, you want the needles to stop stitching right at that point. Okay, when the needles approach that line, just maybe turn one or two stitches by hand, just so that the needles are up, raise the presser foot, turn the fabric out of the way, and stitch. Then what I'm going to do is take a pin, and usually that's kind of uh, a no-no when we're working with sergers, but we're going to use it as just an indicator, and we're going to place the pin at a 45 degree angle into our corner, fold the binding against the pin, and then fold your binding down so the folded edge is aligned with the cut edge of your fabric. So the folded edge with the cut edge of the fabric. Now, it's important that you remove that pin that before be... you start to stitch. That could be a problem. Uh -huh. Raise your presser foot, simply slide the fabric up under, and stitch. And you would, of course, do all four of your corners exactly the same way. You'll notice that we have fusible thread on the underside and regular thread, serger thread on the top side. Now Nancy has the sample that we've stitched previously and she'll show you how to press that binding. Usually at this point you would 
turn the binding to the wrong side and put lots of pins around the edges. Well, we don't have to do that because of that fusible thread. So I'm going to just place this with the fusible thread up, uppermost and wrap the binding around the edge and press. And the fusible binding, fusible thread, excuse me, will adhere the binding to the fabric. And so it acts as a pin technique. Now we're just doing this small sample. You'd have to do your entire quilt, but it's held into place. It really is holding. Now you could hand tack it from the back. You could stitch in the ditch from the right side to hold it in place, but you don't have to use pins for this final stitching. It makes it so much more convenient and much often more I, portable. Then. Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. and many times I kind of hurt myself with all those pins. So this is a great way of using your serger and quilting. So I hope you'll give this a try. If you gathered fabric before, you probably stitched a row or two of basting stitches and then pulled the threads to gather the fabric. Gathering on a serger with a cover stitch can be automatic. Stitch and gather all at once. Curious? Well, we'd like to show you how. The gathering technique on a serger can give you an interior gathers or gathers along in the edge, but before we show you the creative technique, I'd like to start off with the basics. The cover stitch is usually used to hem knits and woven fabrics alike, where there's two needles on one side and then underneath there's one looper that covers the hem to create a stitch, kind of comparable to a double or twin needle on a sewing machine, but a whole lot faster. So before we show you the ultimate way of doing a gathering, let's talk about the cover stitch. And Pam, you have your machine set up for a cover stitch. Again, check your owner's manual. And there are some machines that do not do the stitch. Correct, correct. Now, when we work with a cover stitch, as you said, Nancy, we're going to be stitching on the interior mm -hmm. of our fabric. As you can see, our sergers are set up quite differently. We have the flatbed sewing table on. Our blade is going to be recessed so we don't cut in the middle of our fabric. And I'm also going to be placing a little narrower foot onto the machine. The wider foot works great, but the narrower foot is going to aid in how we guide our fabrics in, and it doesn't get caught as we stitch. I also have a quilting guide bar that I'm going to use as a seam guide. What I'd like to do is, in the basic stitching, is use that as a guide. First, I lay my fabric with the hem side facing up so that I can indicate with the guide bar what my hem width is going to be. I set that, then flip it over and stitch. Because the goal is to enclose that raw edge on the wrong side. Correct. That's where we get the name cover stitch. Mm -hmm. We do have a standard stitch length setting. Our width is not going to be indicated because we have our width will be determined by the settings of the needle, either the two needles uh, narrow or two needles wide. Mm -hmm. So that's the traditional way of doing it, then to make some changes so that you can have decorative stitches within the middle, gathering within the middle of home decorating or children's wear. There's a f little bit of tweaking needed at the machine. Exactly. So all we're going to do now is take our standard setting and we're going to increase our differential feed. Now the differential feed, again, will affect the uh, feed dogs that are on the machine. And what they're going to do is they're going to take a longer stroke from the front, feeding at the same rate on the back, and that's going to feed the fabric in faster mm -hmm. from the front. Our stitch length is going to be set at the maximum length of four. And what I like to also do is then set my width between my rows of gathering using the quilting guide bar. So I'm just simply going to slide this over to a predetermined amount, or you could measure that. Raise your foot, slide the fabric up under the presser foot, because with any cover stitch, it's important that you start stitching on your fabric. Then as you stitch, you can see how beautiful those gathers are going to be, and I like to tickle my fabric as I <laughs> stitch. Then, not placing any resistance on your fabric, you end up with beautiful gathers. And, and you don't have to pull any threads. It's, they're all even and symmetrical, so that works out extremely well. 
So once you know how to create gathers, you may want to just do a ruffle. And so our next little artwork frame shows that Pam has one row of the gathering down the middle, but before doing that, finishing the edges with a rolled edge stitch. Again, a rolled edge stitch is a traditional serger st stitch, and it's th I have it set for a three thread. You're gonna check your owner's manual to make all these settings, but the thread difference that I used in the upper looper, that's the one that's going to show the most, is a texturized nylon thread. It has more loft to it than just an all-purpose thread, maybe double the width. It's, it has, doesn't have as much spin in it, so it fills out the stitches much more, so it fills out that edge. As we look at the sample that I have sewn on one side, I'm using the far right needle and look at how that fills it that out. And you have the machine set at a very short stitch length. And as I serge this, just trimming off a hair of the fabric. And I'll do part of it for you. And there's that edge, just perfectly surged and finished. Then set your machine for the cover stitch, stitch down the center with the differential feed change, and you have another way to create gathers and a great way to use your serger. Create texture with pin tucks using the cover stitch setting. Light to medium weight fabrics can easily take on dimension once you know how to set up your serger. It's all about setup, and when we talk about pin tucks, you'll see from our little sample that the lower pin tucks are raised, they're filled out. The upper tucks are just that, they're tucks, they're not as dimensional, they're little pleats that go across the fabric. On any machine, whether it's a serger or a conventional machine, there are specific setup techniques, and usually the foot is changed, and on the serger, the foot has just one groove so that the extra fabric, whether it's light to medium weight, can fill through this area to create the dimension in the stitch. The cover stitch has the two needles, the one lo looper thread, and Pam has that set up for her stitching, much the same way as our last technique. Yes, Nancy, thank you. We have uh, two different types of guides, as you mentioned, that you're going to be able to use when you're doing a cover stitch pin tucks. The T-bar is going to give you the folded tucks, and then you also have the other guide, which as you can see, we have a cord running through it, and that will give us the raised and dimensional uh, tucks. We do have the cover stitch set up with a narrow cover stitch setting. We want to make sure that our blade is recessed because we're going to be stitching mm -hmm. in the middle of the fabric, and the fabric that we're going to be stitching on, we want to make sure that our tucks are going to stitch on the lengthwise grain of fabric. Um, being a textile major, you know, fabric is pretty important to me, so when we have the fabric in the length, it's always very stable. It doesn't stretch a lot, but even though it's woven on the crosswise grain, it does have more stretch. So that's why I try to work with the lengthwise of it. Even though it's a tightly woven fabric, you'll You'll end up with a little yeah. bit of a mm -hmm. waffle on, right. on your tucks, which doesn't always press out. So again, what we'll do is place the fabric underneath the presser foot, lower the presser foot, always starting in fabric whenever you're stitching using a cover stitch. Simply stitch the line of stitching. And for equal distancing between your tucks, you can also use the outside edge of your presser foot or you can use that quilting bar, quilting mm -hmm. guide bar, on the machine. If you'd stitch another row, I, I think it would show how you okay. would guide that. So again, line up the fabric with the edge of your presser foot and just simply stitch, making nice, even, equal distance tucks. And that really shows how it can go so quickly mm -hmm. and evenly. They're a little bit bigger tucks than you'd uh, achieve on your conventional machine. Then if you wanted to fill them in, you just change the... We remove the guide bar, mm -hmm. just simply slide the guide bar that has the cording, and I also find it easiest if you do place the cording into the guide bar first and then attach it to the machine. That just makes it a little bit easier. And have a tail on the back. Mm -hmm. 
Make sure your needles are up so your cording will slide between the two needles. Set your fabric on top of the cording, lower the foot, and stitch. That really fills it out very well. Mm -hmm. So when you're making little samples, you might want to give this a try because if you make it in advance, then you know the next time you're making a project how you could embellish it by adding pin tucks that are filled in or simply tucked. Decorative threads and your serger are prime for embellishing. The amazing part of this technique is that the stitching is done from the wrong side of the fabric. The pretty part only shows once the stitching is complete. Now you obviously are aware that during this series we're not making projects but making samples because I think that's the best way to make a sample of everything the cover stitch can do or the overlock stitch can do so that you have it in your mind so when the next time you need an embellishment or you need ruffles or you need pin tucks, you've done it and you don't have to experiment with it. This embellishing technique is again that cover stitch and stitching from the wrong side of the fabric is what you'll be seeing where the needle stitches are done. Pam will show you the techniques and then when you're all finished you'll see presto whether it's gridded or random stitching it adds texture and design. The best part of doing samples like this Nancy mm -hmm. is I always say test 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 and once you have done these samples and you've made a test you have something to refer back to and later uh, next time you're wanting to do the technique. We do have this technique set up for a cover stitch narrow mm -hmm. and we can also use this same technique with a cover stitch wide. Coming in you'll be able to see the needles we have them set in the narrow setting but if we move the needle over to the number one position, it would create a wide stitch. Mm -hmm. We've placed decorative thread in the chain looper. And that can take a heavier thread than on the needle looper. So in the needles, excuse me. So we have that one decorative thread. Right, right. Just like we did on the loopers mm -hmm. or with loopers at, at other times with overlock stitching, place your decorative thread in your chain looper. Now when we stitch, I like to start by drawing a line of fabric, uh, line on my fabric. Then again, you're simply going to raise your presser foot, slide it underneath, and start to stitch. After you have that one line of stitching on the fabric, then you can adjust using the quilting guide bar and stitch other lines of stitching. You'll also want to use the markings that are on your presser foot when you start to stitch that first row and that will give you a nice guide to follow. You can see that by using that guide bar, it gives you a nice even spacing. Then the mm -hmm. hardest part of doing this technique, Nancy, is waiting to flip <laughs> your fabric over to see how beautiful those stitches are going to be on the right side. So a little setup with the sewing machine, working with decorative thread, testing it all out, you'll be able to add embellishment. Now we have shown you four different techniques in this program in the first program of the series, another four techniques. If you missed that first program, you can go to nancyzeman.com and watch the program, rewatch it online. As we tell you on most shows, there are 52 shows that you can watch and learn. That's the whole idea, learning sewing, quilting, and embroidery. Pam, it's been my pleasure to have you as our guest again to teach us how to use our sewing machine more than just finishing the edges on fabric, but to really make it sing. Make it sing and certainly have some fun with it. Get those sergers out of the closet and have some fun. So next we're going to have an interview in our Nancy's Corner and enjoy the rest of the program. For this Nancy's Corner segment, I'm putting away fabric, needles, and thread and making room for a guitar and banjo. Please welcome Mark Revinson, Hi, known as Little Rev, a folk singer whose songs include an ode to quilters everywhere. Hi, Nancy. Well, Mark, it's good to have you here. Your music makes me happy, and the topic is quite interesting. 
Because you write a variety of tunes, but you have a whole litany of quilter's music. That's right, yeah. So I have a program called Scraps of Quilting Music. Mm -hmm. That's uh, songs, stories, poetry, lore, anecdotes, uh, all kind of historical stuff. And it's generally about a 70-minute program when I'm visiting quilt sure. groups and guilds and expos and things of that nature. And you had some inspiration behind this topic. I did, yeah. I like to credit really two people. I like to credit my grandmother, uh, uh, Ida Robinson, and I like to credit a friend of mine, Nina in Milwaukee, who uh, really inspired uh, the early you know, stages mm -hmm. of this, this program by inviting me to perform uh, for her quilting guild. But uh, my, yeah, my grandma was, I like to refer to as a, a fiber artist. Sure. An old time fiber artist. She was doing needlepoint and uh, crochet and all kinds of different things, a little bit of quilting. And, mm -hmm. and she, she passed on, I inherited her 500 spools of thread <laughs> and her 10,000 buttons that I used to play with as a kid. And so, so yeah, it's, uh, the subject matter was really quite easy, especially when I thought about the crazy quilt and uh, the patchwork quilt sure. and a lot of the, the, the early traditional patterns, pine tree and log cabin and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. In many ways, it reminded me of uh, a lot of the old time music I was playing that had that had sort of these traditional names like Turkey in a Straw and sure. Arkansas Traveler right. and things like that. So. A lot of similarities can yep. be drawn here. Yep. You're going to sing us a song called The Magic Quilt. That's right. Yep. And uh, I'll give you this in a nutshell, I'll just tell you that it was inspired by all the good that quilters do by often working hundreds, if not thousands of hours on quilts, <laughs> sure. only to then give them away to church raffles and auctions and homeless shelters mm -hmm. and all kinds of different things. And that really inspired me. So someone said, Little Rell, there's got to be a place that's special for quilters when they leave this earth. And I said, by golly, there is. And I'm, <laughs> I'm going to write about it. So. magic quilt up in the sky I'm gonna ride it by and by when my hands quit sewing well it's there I'll soon be going ride the magic quilt up in the sky may your stitches all run in a row may you quilt all the love you sow may you be a light in the darkest of the night ride the magic quilt up in the sky May you always earn your fair share. May you quill like one who really cares. May you never get the blues or drop a loose pin in your shoes. Ride the magic quilt up in the sky. Here we go now. There's a magic quilt up in the sky. I'm a gonna ride it by and by. When my hands quit so well, it's there I'll soon be going. Ride the magic quilt up in the sky. May you give when others are in need. May you learn to keep your karma clean. May your heart be true with that red, white, and blue. And ride the magic quilt up in the sky. And all those folks out there who love to watch you, Nancy, I hope they're going to sing along with me okay. this last time through. There's a magic quilt up in the sky. I'm going to ride it by and by. When my hands quit sewing, well, it's there, I'll soon be going. Ride the magic quilt up in the sky. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> That's so fun. Are you going to sing us one more song as we wrap up this program? All right, I'd love to do that. Change out to your guitar. And uh, so uh, this last song just refers to the emotional connection to quilting and how it gets us through tough times. Blue are the days that I've seen Times they were tough and so lean This old life, it seems like a dream Blue are the days that I've seen these are the colors of my quilt. As Mark is 
signing us off. I would like to thank Pam Mashey for being our guest and, of course, for Little Rev for being with us today. For more information on anything Sewing with Nancy, go to nancyzeman.com. You can re-watch the show. Click on Nancy's Corner and find out more about Little Rev, who has this beautiful music behind us. As I like to close every show, thank you for joining me. Bye for now. These are the colors of my quilt Painted by things that I've felt Golds and yellows and earth tones that mellow These are the colors of my quilt Nancy and Pam Mashey have written an Ultimate Serger Techniques workbook, which includes laminated instructions for all the techniques featured in this two-part series. It's $19.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com 2724. Order item number BK2724, Ultimate Serger Techniques workbook. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Oliso. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.